Good morning. Uh, at the outset, let me extend my thanks to the organizers for giving this opportunity to present our data. Uh, we have been doing it for almost last more than five years, and uh, we are pretty happy and satisfied with what's happening with us. It doesn't change. That's, that's the next one. Yes, it's not going. No. <laughs> Thanks. Women power. Right. The study is not supported by any industry or financial. This is our hospital from where I come from. It's one of the good private hospitals in Bombay. I think I'll keep it in my mind. Right. The aim of the study was to assess the efficacy of the uh, MRGFS in the clinical uh, for the uterine fibroids based on the symptom severity in uh, source code, that's SSS, and in the NPV, non-perfuse volume. We had 722 Indian women with 1,221 fibroids treated, including criteria patients with uterine fibroid who were not contraindicated for. Exclusion criteria were usual suspects, so I won't harp on that. The SSS was calculated by asking patients whether they are totally uh, not distressed or uh, completely distressed on a score of 1 to 5, and 8 other questions st starting from heavy bleeding, going to feeling fatigue, and the score would vary from 8 to 40. So this is how we would cal calculate the non perfuse volume, calculating the basic volume, and then uh, after the contrast MR, finding out the area which is not en enhancing. All patients were followed up up to six months. Post contrast MR pelvis were obtained. SSS and NPV were calculated in all these patients. A classical example enhancing fibroid, completely non enhancing at the end of the treatment. Multiple fibroids, similar results, non enhancement at the end of the treatment. Uh, I'll just mention here at one go in one patient, we have treated up to 25 fibroids completely. So, this is a case where you see a series of uh, the follow-up over a period of three months to six months, as you can see, the decrease in the volume and the NPV progressively in the treated uh, fibroid. The abdominal scars or other technical issues do come in between sometimes, but you can easily overcome them and still treat them successfully and obtain good results. So sy uh, symptom severity score was uh, showed a appreciable decrease, a significant decrease when we followed it up. A decrease mean went down from 26.2 to 17.1 over a period of six months, which is statistically significant. The transport, uh, transformed SS score, score, which is calculated as actual raw score minus lowest possible raw score, divided by the possible raw score range and multiplied by 100, also showed a significant decrease over a period of six months. The fibroid volume, when compared with the pretreatment at the end of six months follow-up, showed a considerable decrease and fell from mean of 145 to 1105. The non-profuse volume uh, of this is where I think we had an excellent result overall. Invariably, in most of our cases, we could achieve the NPV varying about 80 percent and going almost up to 92 percent and mean was 88%. The, uh, the, in large number of patients, the, it, uh, there was no uh, adverse effect. Few adverse effects like abdominal pain, the leg pain, the skin, uh, skin blister, etc., did happen. Two of our uh, 722 patients had an intestinal puff, which just could not be avoided, and it was well told to the patient that they might expect because of the position of the intestine. It was 0.2%, but it was well treated. The adverse effect at the six months follow showed a 96% had absolutely no problem whatsoever. Out of 17 patients who, who tried for a pregnancy, five became pregnant. And recurrence rate at the end of six months was 1.66%, and we had to treat, retreat these patients. So out of these 722 patients with 20, 1,221 fibroids, which were treated between June, uh, uh, November 10 to June uh, 2017, the, uh, the, important, the most important treat, uh, uh, symptom for which they came was menorrhagia, followed by dysmenorrhea, 
followed by urinary frequency and infertility. If we see the symptom severity score reduction in our study, it was comparable to other studies which have been published, uh, especially the Hindley and Marriott uh, HL. And as you can see, the symptom severity reduction was 28.31 in our score as compared to 27 and 19 to other studies. The NPV, which achieved after the procedure, was significantly higher in our study compared to the other reported series. It was in the range of 88.21%. And adverse effect, which were immediately and then uh, demonstrated at the end of six months, more or less compared uh, well with the published study till today. We are still following up all these patients and we'll, I'll present you the data sometime later. Uh, immediate were 35% and at the uh, end of six months, the adverse effect uh, went down to the range of 2%. The number of pregnancy and the live birth after uh, the treatment in our series was 29.4%. And the, as I already told you, recurrence rate of symptoms in our study, which required the reinvention and reintervention, was 1.6%. So there was a definite improvement in symptoms with reduction in the symptom severity score that is significant, statistically significant with a rope value of less than 0 0.001. The reduction in the fibroid volume at six months was also statistically significant with a p-value of less than uh, 0001. So, in conclusion, MRGFS is an important new non-invasive and highly effective treatment for uterine fibroid. Recovery from the treatment is almost immediate and symptom relief is generally noticed sooner than alternate therapies. Fewer immediate and delayed adverse effects and low recurrence rate is what we saw in our series. And fertility preser preservation is a major advantage. And as no one can do any, any studies, any investigations, or any new things alone. It's a huge team which you ne always need to bring about great results. And I acknowledge the huge team which supports me at Just Look Hospital. Thanks. Thanks for your kind attention. Amazing results. And my question is basically to all the speakers in the session, what will it take to convince gynecologists that this is a first-line treatment worth considering? There is no way you can honestly convince the gynecologist. I have to tell you the truth. <laughs> you have to, what we did, when we initially started this at our hospital, we, uh, as the radiologist, you're always idiot, and you are, you're comparatively honest people. So you, I, we thought that it would be a good idea to have gynecologists as our partners. And therefore, when we launched the program, we did have gynecologists in our team. But 20 odd cases down the line, we realized that our partners were not our partners. And they were basically talking something different when not in front of us. So we took a decision to detach ourselves from their partnership completely. And we went over totally on our own, A, through the CMEs, through the webs and through the YouTube. And trust me, today, I'm pretty proud to say, we send patients to them mm -hmm. when we find those which are unfit for the treatment for the MRGFS for the fibroids. So it's, it's working very well now. We are not worried about that. After hearing you and also Paige on the first day, I think you should uh, establish a new department in hospitals. Call it fasology, or I don't know how, what but a new sort of profession that will attract patients, like you said, through social media and so on. I fully agree. And in our hospital, we have this non-invasive and minimally invasive OPD. We run that OPD, and the patients come to us directly. We advise the patient. It's not only the fibroids. We advise them regarding the liver tumors, because we do large number of RFAs and microwaves and rest of all uh, minimally invasive interventions. And yes, we do run those OPDs, and, we have uh, a very, very busy OPD, and we run it seven days, uh, six days a week. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I, I want to thank you for that presentation. Uh, after being at these FUS meetings for so many years, I think this is really a transformative talk. We're talking about thousands of patients and studies now instead of just tens or dozens or hundreds. So this is tremendous data. Uh, so thank you for, for relaying it to us. Thank um, you. I think one, two comments. Um, first about 
directly advertising to patients on YouTube and the internet is so important. Direct to patient marketing, we see on television all the time new medications that are being brought in front of the public. So again, bringing this directly to patients and, and women who are searching for other options is so important. I think another place where we can have a really good impact is on that younger patient population that wants to not only preserve their fertility but have have children. So can you just elucidate a little bit more about the subgroup of women with that, that ended up getting pregnant or wanted to get pregnant? What kind of fibroids did they have? Were they submucosal? Did they have fertility Good. problems before? We have studied those 17 fibroids, which mm -hmm. uh, became majority of them were intramural. Okay. Only two were uh, submucosal, but mm -hmm. the very small submucosal component. Okay. And yes, they did. Uh, one of them is from Mauritius and other is from New Zealand. And did they have a prior history of infertility or they just Came no, because they, 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 they came for infertility. Okay. They came. okay. I have included only those cases who came for infertility as their primary symptom for the treatment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you.